Hi, this is Jim Rivas, CEO of Cloud Security Alliance. The Certificate of Competence in Zero Trust is a groundbreaking educational product and certification to help prepare you for your Zero Trust journey in your organization to help you uh, professionally grow in uh, an ability to master concepts that we think are just going to continue to grow and have a bigger and bigger place in information technology and cybersecurity. So let me talk a little bit about what it is, how we developed it, uh, how you can go about this and, and learn about it. And hopefully it's something that you will want to make part of your uh, educational portfolio. So Zero Trust, as, as we all know, is this really a philosophy about no implicit trust, uh, about having least privileged types of access to protect critical assets. Now, identity is a very critical part of that. When we think about in the, the early days, Zero Trust and, and the, the forerunners to it, Orange Book Security, some other things, it very much operated on the network layer. We thought about network security, and then we understood, hey, everybody's on the network. That's not good protection in itself. So we got to think about identif identity and identifying who's actually on that network. And then we just really built from that so that this philosophy can be applicable to so many different areas of information technology, which I'll go into more. So out of Cloud Security Alliance's Zero Trust Advancement Center, our research and our training function, what we've done is we've brought together the community to just deliver state-of-the-art Zero Trust knowledge and to provide you this in a context that really is going to be applicable for so many of the different technology challenges you're going to have. So, you know, why zero trust? Why now? And, and I've talked a little bit here, definitionally, how I think about zero trust. So I think always from the early days of information technology and early days of the internet, we've certainly wanted to lock down things and have the highest level of security that we can. And, and least privilege is a way of thinking about it, is that no one should have access to any systems except those that are explicitly defined to be able to access those systems. So, but it was hard to do with the, the technology, the resources, but now I think we are seeing with cloud probably being the number one reason, this sort of self-service on-demand provisioning, the scale that we have an ability to actually make zero trust sort of the default and make it easy. And so I think when I think about it, I really do believe that zero trust is going to be the default way in the future that we architect the internet and we attach devices to it. I think when you consider internet of things, IOT, OT systems, that zero trust is going to be the probably the primary way you're gonna secure those systems. We certainly hope to be able to secure the internals and the software development in these different devices, but we don't always have access to it. And it's a big debate and it's, it's not easy to do. So the, the point of this for me is that we're going to see so many dynamic changes in technology, but the principles around zero trust are going to remain. And I think if you really understand it as a philosophy informing strategy, you'll find you can apply it to the changes that the world's going to bring us. So AI, the emergence of generative AI, which is probably the number one trend right now, the biggest issue in boardrooms. This is something that requires access to so much data data governance and so much data protection issues that relate to this. And I think you're going to find if you've got generative AI, large language model projects, that this is going to be a key way that you're going to think about how you secure those different areas. 
So let's let's consider that and let's um, move forward with that belief. Um, so what we've done with the CCZT is we've tried to make this one vendor neutral, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't really depend on any specific company's technology. And in fact, it doesn't even depend on any specific part of the technology stack. We could be talking about networks. We could be talking about applications, serverless, generative AI, all these different areas, IoT. And so it's really neutral in, in that area. Uh, we've really tried to look at best practices, some of things we've articulated and defined, but there is a good wealth of content. Some of it's been released very recently. And so that's why it's, I think, important to have an organization that's going to pull together what the community has. So the U.S. federal government, there's been a lot of work around zero trust with the executive orders we've had. And while this is certainly not specific to the U.S. federal government, the reality is there's so much good content. You think about the CISA maturity model, you think about work that's come out of the DOD, the NSTAC documents, NIST, that we've incorporated that into this training. We've gotten the experts, the sources of those to actually participate in this. And when you speak of the source, there's no better person than John Kindervog, the creator of Zero Trust. And he said this, and, and we're just, we're very grateful for him. He says he's grateful for us, but we're grateful for all of the work he did in reviewing this, in helping us in the design area and getting a lot of the resources involved. And I think what we have put together is really true to his vision. And he seems to be pretty delighted with what we've been able to do here. So no better endorsement than that, I think. So in terms of how the zero trust training and the certification work. So we have this curriculum and I'm gonna talk a little bit later on the next slide on how you can actually go get the certificate. But we have this training that has six different modules and it, it and it covers these different areas so foundational concepts that's what we're talking about like the definitions and really understanding this from a definitional perspective software defined perimeter one of the earliest iterations of zero trust like implementations and it's referenced heavily in the nist documents around zero trust other industry best practices that have come together architecture planning and implementation. And if you look on the right side of the screen on how the questions break down, you'll see that preponderance in planning, which I think really when we talk about the experiences that organizations have, it really rings true in terms of what they need to do. So to actually take the exam, you register at our site, and you can purchase the token, and with the token, you get all the self-study guidance you need. Now, you may want to also enroll in training. We, we like that. We certainly recommend that. It could depend on your budget, but training gives you extra uh, sorts of context and, and more information. But certainly, just with having the exam and the study guide, you can take the exam. You don't need to take it right away. You can you can get all the, the material you need. Take your time. Take up to a year if you need to. But then you can take the exam online. So here's some places where you can learn more about it. You can learn more about our training, just overall what we're doing with Zero Trust and our Zero Trust Advancement Center and other resources we've curated. So I hope you'll check out the CCZT. We're very proud of it. Got great people behind it.